Spirit in every area of our life. Today we're talking about who is the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person, a personality. He is one part of the Godhead. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is one. And the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit never contradict each other because they are one. Amen. Many people have an issue and problem with that. But let me explain it so you can understand. How can God be one and three when he's actually one? Let's make an example of yourself. You have a body, soul, and spirit, but yet you're one. Amen. If you're a parent, you're a parent, you're also yourself, and if you work, you're also whatever job you do, but you are the same one. Amen. Look at water. Water can be liquid, can be ice, can be steam, but yet it's one, water. So this confuses a lot of people, but it's the Holy Spirit that will give you understanding. God is one. But we're talking today about the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Many people know who the God the Father is, looking through the Old Testament. Many people know who Jesus is, but many people don't really understand who the Holy Spirit is. And he's a person that's so important in every day of your life and forever. Amen. Praise God. So quickly, the Holy Spirit is a personality. He's a comforter. He's an intercessor. He's a teacher. He disperses gifts as he will. Amen. But I'm going to go to, through quite a few scriptures. You can write them down. Today, I'm just going to teach. Amen. Amen. So let's talk about the Holy Spirit, the teacher. Somebody say teacher. I'm going to turn to the book of John, chapter 14, 26, and also Luke, chapter 12, 11 through 12. John, chapter 14 through 26. 14, verse 26, sorry. But the Comforter, somebody say Comforter, comforter. which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So number one, you get he's the comforter and the teacher. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. When the apostles that were walking and talking with Jesus, they didn't understand his parables. But when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they began to look back and understand all the things that Jesus was talking about. You see, you can't have that information on your own. You need the Holy Spirit. So right there we understand the Holy Spirit is the teacher. He's the comforter. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to Luke chapter 12, 11 through 12. Beloved, please write down these scriptures. You need a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. You need to go back and review and meditate on the word of God. Luke chapter 12, 11 through 12. The word of God says, and when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost, somebody say Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. shall teach you in that same hour what ye ought to say. Amen. So not only is the Holy Spirit the, te the teacher, he also teaches you what to say. Have you ever went to the job interview without the Holy Spirit? Maybe by the mercy of God, you still have the job. Sometimes when you go into the job interview or you go before your boss or you go before powers, that's, you know, um, your, whoever, your boss. And you now say, Holy Spirit, as I go in here, I don't want to speak. Teach me what to say. You've already got the job. Amen. No matter, they're uh, looking at the resumes of everybody else, they have so much more experience. But when the Holy Spirit teaches you what to say, it's well. I went to a job interview once and I prayed. And I asked for favor, that everybody should favor me, that you should teach me what to say. And one person, 
he liked comic books for some reason. He was somebody that liked comic books. So somebody in the other, there were so many people in the meeting, you know, they put that pressure on you. Somebody asked, do you like comic books? I didn't really like comic books, but I think I remember one or something that I knew from back. The other guy began to fall in love with me. Amen. So it's like that. When the Holy Spirit teaches you what to say, you should not even worry. Praise God. So we understand, number one, Holy Spirit is a teacher. Somebody say teacher. teacher. Amen. Holy Spirit is a comforter. Somebody say comforter. comforter. Amen. This Bible study is very important for your life. Amen. Today, today and next week, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The Holy Spirit is power. But ye shall receive power. Somebody say power. power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the outermost parts of the earth. Amen. But ye shall receive what? Power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So, if you want to witness to your family, you want to witness to somebody else, you want to witness to your neighbor, you should have the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the kingdom of God is not with words, but with power. So you need power. In this day and age, in every day, but especially now, the end times, you have to have the power of God. Amen. Otherwise, they will just waste you anyhow. Power. Somebody say power. power. Amen. Amen. Understanding. The Holy Spirit is also understanding. If you don't understand something, you need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not just understanding, but he's counsel and knowledge. Let's turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 2. Isaiah 11, verse 2. I'll give a second so you can get there. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. wisdom. And understanding. Somebody say understanding. understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. Somebody say counsel and might. Counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge. And of the fear of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit is wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, uh, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. How does one even, you see in this day, where no, a lot of people, they don't even have the fear of the Lord. They say any blaspheming thing. But that spirit of God in you puts that fear in you. And it's not a fear like, you know, you're afraid of uh, something that you're going to die. It's a reverence. Fear of the Lord means a reverence for the, for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, our Gio was telling a story. That he wrote his, all of his notes in a book for the class that he was going to take a test. And I'm sure some of you have heard the story. So somebody decided to steal that book with all of his notes. So that night the Holy Spirit showed him exactly what's on the test. Amen. Then he took the test and still passed it without going to his notes. Praise God. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is understanding. It's not by your notes. It's not by your power. It's not by your studying. You can study something and still forget at the last moment. But with the Holy Spirit, even the answer you didn't have, he already was there before they created that question. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is counsel, knowledge, understanding. He, puts, he gives you that reverence for God. Amen. Praise God. Luke chapter 1 verse 35. The Holy Spirit is who gave Jesus his human body. Holy Spirit is who gave Jesus his human body. What do I mean? Let's turn there. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. The word of God says, And the angel answered and said unto her, This is Mary. The Holy Ghost, somebody say Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. 
the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. Mary was a virgin. The seed that brought Jesus from heaven, that's the Holy Spirit that planted the seed inside of Mary's womb. Praise God. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is who gave Jesus his human body. Amen. Praise God. The Holy Spirit also helps our infirmities. Holy Spirit is also the intercessor. You can put it there in the same section. Helps our infirmities and intercessor. And while you're writing that down, go to Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 27. Very important. I can come here and preach all the time, all day long. But if you don't know the Holy Spirit, you still need to learn who he is. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 27. I'll just read through 28. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I'll stop there for a moment. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Sometimes you don't know what the sickness it actually is. But you just know that it's in this part of your body. You don't know. If you work in the medical field, some people have a sickness which is kind of uh, generational. Some have a sickness because they drank too much. Some have a sickness because they ate the wrong food. But if you look at some, it's a spiritual sickness. Only God knows if it's a spiritual sickness, that sickness that you're having, that pain in that part of your body, he knows. And he's the one that helps you with those things. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So when you pray for somebody, don't just start saying, in the name of Jesus, I, you know, I, now ask the Lord, Lord, what is this person's situation? Let the Holy Spirit tell you something specifically. Amen. And sometimes he'll give you a vision of exactly what's going on with the person. But you yourself, if you're having pain in your body, when you're not praying the Holy Ghost, he now deals with that situation. I'll continue to read. Amen. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. So I'll go there. We know not what to pray. General prayers are okay, but specific prayers are better. Amen. Imagine you're fighting a war. And you're just spraying everywhere with machine gun, but you don't know where the enemy is. Maybe you hit one, maybe you hit two. But if you take all of your ammunition and go towards the exact thing, then that thing will blow up out of your life. Amen. Amen. So you don't know what you should pray. Before I come here, I don't know what I should preach. Unless the Holy Spirit tells. And as you know, probably the situation that you're going through, you hear it inside of the message because the Holy Spirit knew you're going to come. Amen. You might have been asking a question in your mind and then you hear it in the message. It's not by any pastor's power. It's because the Holy Spirit knew that you're going to come. Amen. Amen. But the Spirit itself inter make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Amen. No man's words can do those groanings that the Holy Spirit. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit intercedes for you with the words that man cannot possibly perceive. So when you pray in the Spirit, you're not praying on your own. You're praying with the Holy Spirit is allowing you to pray. Amen. Amen. Verse 27. And he searches the heart, knowing what is in the mind of the Spirit. Because he make it intercession. Somebody say intercession. intercession. For the saints, according to the will of God. Amen. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Spirit is interceding for you, he's not interceding for you for your own will. Lord, I want that yacht. I want that mansion. I want that house that I looked at. But the Holy Spirit will now say, no, I'm interceding for you according to the will of God. This is the place you'll raise your family, not here. Amen. This is a land you'll go, not here. I want that job, Holy Spirit. No, this is the one I want for you. What's that power fighting my family, my, fighting my children? I don't know why this comes every season. The Holy Spirit will intercede for you according to the will of God. Amen. Praise God. So, 
You now understand the Holy Spirit is the intercessor and he helps our infirmities. You also understand you don't know how to pray. It's okay to ask, Holy Spirit, teach me what to pray. Lord, this situation I'm going through, so many storms, so many attacks. Holy Spirit, teach me what's going on. Tell me the root of my problem. Amen. I'll continue. The Holy Spirit gives gifts as he will. That's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 11. But the manifestation of the Spirit, is everybody there? Amen. Amen. But the manifestation, manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, and other the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another working of miracles. To another prophecy. And another discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of the tongues. Of tongues. Verse 11 is very important. But all these worketh. That one and the, se the self same spirit. Dividing to se every man severally as he will. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for the body of Christ. Many people don't understand that. Many people start off in ministry very well, but they get carried away. The gift that you have is for the body of Christ. Amen. So when you have a gift of, say, healing, it's not for you just to go and now begin to make money off of it. It's for you to help others in the body of Christ. If you have a gift of prophecy, you see many prophets now, they don't have any church. That's not even in scriptural in the New Testament. They don't have any church. They're just in a house somewhere. Somebody comes there and they begin to prophesy for them. They don't have, I don't go to any church. They're now prophets like the Old Testament. If you don't understand, you go to one of those false prophets. The prophecy, the word of God says, is for the body of Christ. Amen. So it's the Holy Spirit that gives you gifts probably before you were born. Sometimes you even get the gifts because you ask. And it's okay to covet the, spirit, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. And it's the prophet to every man. Prophet. Um, but the word, but all these work it, that one and the self, same spirit divided to every man severally as he will. Amen. So it's up to the Holy Spirit which gift he gives you. But you can also ask. Amen. Many people were not prophets when they started. But they cried out to God, Lord, I need, I want to hear from you. I want a better, I want to hear from you. And then God said, okay. But it's as he wills. Amen. So the gifts you have, not everything is about money, beloved. Some people are using all of your gifts to make money. Money, money, money. Now, many people from the time they were young knew how to fix radios, fix things, build things. When they got older, they went into construction. Very good. But what do you do for the house of God? When something's broken in the house of God, you don't show up. Amen. The toilet is broken. You know how to fix the toilet, but you don't show up. But you're looking for jobs. That, don't you know? One thing that you do for God will never go in vain. Amen. Amen. When you work for the things that you do for God will never go in vain. Eternity will pass away. It will never go in vain. Amen. So use the gifts that God gives you for him. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let me continue. That's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Somebody say spirit of truth. I'm going to turn to John chapter 16, verse 13. In a separate Bible study, we can study the gifts of the Holy Spirit separately. But today we're talking general. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth that's found in John chapter 16, verse 13. John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when he... The spirit of truth is come. Notice the word of God didn't say it. He is a personality. That's why when you know he's a personality, you can know that you can have relationship with him. But you can't have relationship with an it. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. 
For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall be that he that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. How you that sitting here know that Jesus Christ is real without seeing Him physically? That's through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. He gives you discernment. Amen. When somebody's lying to you, no matter how good that they're coming with that lie, the Holy Spirit can just give you discernment. This person, is he just not saying the truth? That's the Holy Spirit. He's the spirit of truth. He's the one that allows you to know when, the, when you're hearing the word of God that he convicts you that this is true, what the word of God is saying. Amen. He gives you that understanding. Amen. Praise God. So for you to even accept Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit was there to make you understand without seeing him that he is your Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise God. The Holy Spirit speaks about Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Spirit will speak about Jesus Christ. Amen. Not himself. Praise God. So when you're hearing a Bible study, you're hearing the word of God. The Holy Spirit is allowing you to, he's pointing you to your Lord and Savior. Praise God. Amen. So that's found in John chapter 16, verse 13. Now there's so much more, but I'm just going to round up here because we're going to pray. Because maybe you're here, but you don't really have a relationship with the Holy Spirit because you didn't know who he was. Today we're going to ask him to come into your life, to, to possess your life. So I want you to begin to walk and talk with him. May, amen. amen. As I hear the testimonies of so many men of God that, you know, have miracle and healing ministries, they always say they have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when they have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit is always with them. So when the presence of the Holy Spirit is always with you, signs follow you. Amen. When the presence of the Holy Spirit is at your workplace, signs follow you. Amen. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is who speaks to his prophets. Whether dreams, visions, maybe you're one of them. Probably you've had a dream and then next day something happened and you saw it in the dream. That's the Holy Spirit that gave you that understanding. The Holy Spirit directs his ministers. So many voices of the world can be directing. But the Holy Spirit directs his ministers. That's what happened with Saul. King Saul. So many voices, do this, do this, do this. He followed the voice of those people instead of the voice of God. Sometimes when you're hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit to direct you, it might be lonely. Everybody must say that it won't work. That's madness. How can you do something like this? When the Holy Spirit gives you a secret, it's up to him to make it come to pass. Amen. Amen. That's why I don't argue with too many. Once the Holy Spirit says go, just go. Amen. When you go somewhere and you go on your own, when you get in trouble, it's by the mercy of God for to deliver you. But if you now pray and got confirmation from the Holy Ghost, somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And you go there and you get in trouble, you say, Holy Spirit, you must get me out of this place because you told me to come. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is who directs his ministers. Don't let anybody direct you. You need to hear from God. Our body is his home. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Many people say, I can do what I like with my body. It's my body. I... No, it's not. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You should glorify God in your body. Amen. That also concerns the way you dress. If the way you're dressing is making men fall into lust and all type of things like that, you're not glorifying your God in your body. Amen. So inside, outside, everything you do, your body, for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say, well, I eat what I like, I do what I like. No. If you know this thing is going to cause you trouble later on down your life, you should do it in moderation or you should stop it. Amen. Praise God. There was a minister of God. When he was young, he had an encounter with Jesus. And Jesus came to him and said, this way that you're eating right now at your young age, you need to change it because I have a lot of work for you to do. Amen. So he changed his way, but he lived almost, I think, almost to 90 something. You understand? So if now you can just say, well, I'm with God. 
so I eat whatever I like, God will do whatever. It doesn't work that way. If God tells you your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, you should glorify God with your body. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. I want you to understand this very well. If you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and think he's on a cloud somewhere, he only shows up when you pray. No. He lives inside of you. You can walk, talk with the Holy Spirit. You can have him when you're in your bedroom, when you wake up. He lives inside of you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And when the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and you begin to pray, the Holy Spirit, his presence covers you, your house, your family, and the others that you're praying for. Amen. Amen. So, If you didn't know the Holy Spirit lives inside you, you need to know that he lives inside of you. You can conquer anything in this world when you have the Holy Spirit. Let whatever challenge come, you cannot be defeated when you have the Holy Spirit. He can just tell you one secret, one secret that can deliver you from that situation. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the voice of God within you. Stop this thing that you're doing. Stop this thing that you're doing. This thing that you're about to say, hold your tongue. Don't say it. Don't say it. That's when you begin to argue. But now they, they look what they said to me. And then if you just blow out, the Holy Spirit says, I told you. Now look, you got yourself in trouble. The Holy Spirit is the voice of God within you. Have you ever, you know, you, you just felt it in your spirit that you shouldn't go to this place. But you were pressured into go. And you said, ah, why didn't I listen? You just felt in your spirit that, no, I shouldn't do this or I shouldn't do that. But after everything was done, you said, oh, that's the reason I heard that voice. It's that voice of God within you. And sometimes it's not like thunder and fire and shouting loud. Sometimes it's a still, small voice. Amen. Praise God. Sometimes he'll keep repeating that voice. I told you to do this yesterday. Time's running out. I told you to do this yesterday. Time's running out. Next thing you know, time ran out. Sometimes you'll just say, once you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, begin to do it. Amen. The Holy Spirit is that voice of God within you that reminds you of things. Sometimes you'll just be explaining something that you'll be reminded of something else. It says, Holy Spirit says, mention that one also. Mention that one also. That's the Spirit of God within you. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's presence within us. God's presence within us. I'm taking my time so you can write it down, so you can really meditate, because I want you to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. God's presence within us. The Holy Spirit is like the wind. It's mysterious. As you know, wind cannot be caged. There's no contraption, no chain, no prison that can cage the wind ever. Amen. So when you're filled with the Holy Spirit... It's impossible for your enemies to cage you. They think you're showing up there because that's where you show up every day at the same time. That day you didn't show up there. Can't cage you. They want to cage you by telling um, a lie about you. But the Holy Spirit will go behind and they cannot cage you that way. The Holy Spirit is like the wind. So when you have the Holy Spirit, he's living in you. You're walking and talking with him. You need to obey him. Let me tell you, beloved, sometimes the things that's very easy to do, the Holy Spirit will tell you not to do it. Say, Holy Spirit, but this is the easiest route. This is the easiest way. But he says, for your own good, don't take that easy way. Go around the long way. He says, okay, I'll obey. You'll now find out. Amen. Praise God. I was coming to church. Remember, before the new year, many of us had testimonies of how we escaped accidents. Amen. I was one of them that escaped accident. Praise God. When I was with uh, our regional overseer, and I was... Upset because I had to come to church. I was in Oakland coming to church here. And before I was on my way, I said, come back. I need you to do something. I said, I'm the one that has to drive that. How many? You're just driving. I'm just thinking that in my head. But as we came on the freeway, the road, just ahead of us, if we had just timed it right, there was one of the biggest accidents. My wife is my witness. Amen. All the place was scattered everywhere. I know that I should have passed by that place at that time. Amen. So when you're like... When you have the Holy Spirit with you, you cannot be caged. Why didn't you show up there? They took all their resources because they knew you'd show up there, but you didn't show up. Amen. You, your family can't be caged. 
The time they're shooting up schools and shooting up, the Holy Spirit will just tell you, your child is not going to school today. But I have a test. You're going against my test. I'm going to fail. Then the, shoot, the school gets shot up. If you have the Holy Spirit and have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you cannot be caged. Period. Amen. Praise God. So learn to be obedient. Sometimes it's cheap and easy to go this way. Sometimes it's cheap and easy to go that way. But listen to the Holy Spirit. Your life will be saved. You will be free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. So if you're walking, talking, presence of God in you, your freedom. Amen. Freedom from depression. Freedom from anxiety, freedom from household wickedness. They can't cage you. They can't touch you. He comforts you when you, come on, amen. Praise God. There's so many things you cannot even do the next day without the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's truly the Holy Spirit that comforts us to even be in this type of world where so many things are going on. You can still easily say, I'm going to commit suicide. I'm depressed. But it's the Holy Spirit that comforts you. Amen. So when the Spirit of the Lord is there, there is liberty and freedom. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is mysterious. He's like the wind. You cannot be caged. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. When the Holy Spirit challenges a problem, the problem is over. Amen. No Christian should be without the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. I recorded the message if you didn't get the notes. Praise God. But I want you to have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always pointing to Jesus. Right now, if you're here and you've not accepted Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior, and you would like to, I would like you to repeat after me. Amen. Praise God. Say, Jesus Christ, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. Jesus Christ, take complete control of my life. Today and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. The word of God says in Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Peter replied, repent. Somebody say repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right now, I want you to repent. We're going to pray today that you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, that he will possess your life even more. You will increase in your life. Right now, ask God for mercy. Let nothing hinder your prayers today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, have mercy, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Wash us clean by your precious blood. In the name of Jesus. Right now, talk to your Heavenly Father. Oh Lord, have mercy, Lord. Maybe he's been speaking to you. You didn't listen. Tell him, have mercy. You will now go the correct way. In the name of Jesus Christ. He's your, he's your friend. Father, in the name of Jesus, have mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. I want you to stand to your feet. We're going to pray. Amen. If you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, today is your day. I'm going to pray. You need to surrender. Amen. Let the Spirit of the Lord come down. Let the Spirit of the Lord come down in Jesus' name. Connect. Let the Spirit of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the Spirit of the Lord come down in our lives. Let the Spirit of the In Jesus' name, let the Spirit of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the Spirit of the Lord come down. Holy Ghost, do it again. I want you to connect them. Do it again in our lives. Hallelujah. Oh, boy.
is seated upon the throne. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to fill every vacancy in our life. Your body, your soul, your spirit, you need to surrender. Amen. Amen. There should not be one area of your life that Satan still controls. That's an area of darkness. We need the Holy Spirit to fill every vacancy of our life. We're going to pray like this. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Fill every vacancy, every vacancy of my life. Of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today is a day of freedom. Today is a day to connect. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, here I am. Search me. If there's any vacancy in my life, fill it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Brocanta. Yecanta. Brocanta. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, fill every vacancy of my life. I don't want any room for Satan again. You need to fill me, Lord. Fill every vacancy in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, any clout, any part that Satan has in my life, today kill it. Let your light shine in every area of my life. Cry out to the Holy Spirit. He will hear you. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, Holy Spirit, fill every vacancy in my life. Uh, no more area for darkness. Uh, that area of darkness that I can't control. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. My, life is available. my life is available. Possess my life completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. You can ask him, ask him to enter into your life. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, Holy Spirit, my life is available. Enter, 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 enter. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, here I am, Lord. Holy Spirit, uh, enter into every area of my life. Uh, possess my life completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, he's a comforter. He's a teacher. He's the power that you need. He's the comforter. Holy Spirit, uh, possess my life completely. You can ask him in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Holy Spirit, I want a personal relationship with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, I want to know you better. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit, uh, take complete control. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Holy Ghost, fire, fire, fall on me, your hands. Holy Ghost, fire, fire, fall on me. Just like the day of Pentecost. Yes. Just like the day of Pentecost. Fire, fall on me. Cry out. Holy Ghost, fire, fire. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, fire. Fire fall on me, just like the day of Pentecost. Fire fall on me, oh, just like the day of Pentecost. Fire fall on me, hands. Fire fall on me, fire fall on me, Holy Ghost. 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 Fire fall on me. Holy Ghost, fire fall on me. Holy Ghost, fire fall in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Breathe, on my life. breathe on my life. I need you in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, breathe on every area of my life. I need you in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, breathe on every area of my life. I need you. Tell him you need him in the name of Jesus Christ. Prokanta sabra kenteraka in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, breathe on every area of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, talk to your heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, here I am. Breathe on every area of my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, bro canta setraka, ye canta da pa canta ka, bro conto so bro canta ka, ye canta satra. You need him desperately. You need him desperately. Holy Spirit, this is your time with God. Talk to him right now. Holy
Holy Spirit, I don't want to remain the same like this. Uh, breathe on every area of my life. Uh, I want an increase. 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 Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, possess me. Holy Ghost fire, 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 Holy Ghost fire. Fire must come down, fire must come down, fire must come down. Fire must come down. Fire must come down. Fire must come down. Your hands. Fire must come down. Desperate. Fire must come down. Fire must come down. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Burn every infirmity. That came upon my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost fire, burn every infirmity that came upon our life. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost fire, kill every infirmity, kill every infirmity by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, pro canta, canta sepro, o canta sepra, ye canta sepra. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Fire, Holy Ghost fire, kill every infirmity in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say every covenant decision against me and my family as of today expire in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever they've decided about you is not your business. They must expire today. In the name of Jesus Christ, every covenant decision they've made about you and your family, expire. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say expire. I decree upon everyone's life that's here. Every covenant decision that's made about you and your family, expire by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, expire by fire. Expire by fire. Expire by fire. Expire by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Right now for the next five minutes, if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the gifts of speaking in tongues, this is your time right now for, 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 to receive. Amen. The word of God says in Acts 19, 3 through 6. And he said unto them, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then Paul, John, barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on which on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Amen. Praise God. The Holy Spirit gives gifts as he will. You can ask him. You can covet the gifts. Amen. If it's ancestral powers that's making you that you can't receive that gift, kill it in the name of Jesus. Well, before the fire of God came down in the Old Testament, always there was blood. We're going to pray like this. We're going to sing like this. There is power. There is power. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power. Do you believe it? Yes. There is power. There is power. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power. There is power. There is power in the blood. Power, power, power. Power. There is power. Yes. Victory. There is victory. There is victory. There is victory in the blood of Jesus. There is victory. There is victory. There is victory in the blood of Jesus. Say, I plead the blood of Jesus over my life and family in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life and family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life and family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Right now, you're going to Say what I'm going to say. Repeat what I'm going to repeat. Like machine gun. 
Amen? Amen. And after a while, let the Holy Spirit take over. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit take over your mouth, take over your tongue. This is no scientific formula. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit possess my life. Holy Spirit, 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 possess my life. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, possess my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, possess my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, possess my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pro canta shetara. Ya canta sapro. Go canta sitera canta. Ya canta sapro. Go canta papo pro. Go canta sapra. Ya canta sapra. Go canta papa pro koto pa. Ro canta sapra kit. Ya canta sa. Holy Spirit possess my life. Holy Spirit possess my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the let the Spirit of God move you. Let the God take control of your tongue. In the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to speak with other tongues. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pro can. Ya canta. Surrender, surrender in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not by your will or concentration. You surrender. Jesus Christ. Let the spirit of the Lord come down. 
that we need you, Lord. Let the Spirit of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the Spirit of the Lord Yes, your life must never be the same again. You need him. You need him in every area of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I ask that you will possess everyone's life here. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, 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 press in, press in, press in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Enjoy the presence of God. Enjoy the presence of God in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, possess every area of our life in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, possess my life. Holy Spirit, possess my life. Holy Spirit, possess. This is your time now. This is your time now. Don't rush now. Enjoy the presence of God. Your life is Him. He's interceding for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, possess my life. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, 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 that long-term situation. Let the Holy Spirit intercede. Surrender right now. Holy Ghost, we need you right now. Possess our life in the name of Jesus Christ, the comforter, the teacher, the one that will make you like the wind, the one that intercedes for you according to the will of God. Yes, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, possess every area of my life. Desperately hungry for him. Desperately ask him. Desperately surrender to him. In the name of Jesus Christ, You'll, I promise your life will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Holy Ghost, do it again, again. Do it again in our lives. Hallelujah. Jesus, 
Paul. 